Robert Daly is director of the Kissinger Institute on China and the United States. Welcome back, Robert. Good to see you. Thank you. Uh, first thing I want to talk about is whether the United States has a coherent policy toward China or a strategy for its evolving relationship with China. It's a work in progress. Uh, the Obama administration has been criticized for not having, at the very least, an adequate strategy for China. And the accusation is that we announced that we were going to pivot and then rebalance to East Asia and that we we're going to be bringing military assets, diplomatic, soft power, a whole range of capabilities. And this was to be aimed not just at China, but this was a recognition of, of the rise and the importance of Asia. And this, But this was done despite it's not being aimed at China, in response to China. And yet, since the announcement, we haven't actually put a lot of assets in place. Do we really need one in the sense that, you know, in corporate world, they used to talk about five-year plans and things like that. And right. now they talk about adaptive planning, where things are moving so rapidly, you can't really have a five-year blueprint. Do we really need a detailed, structured approach to dealing with another nation? You want to retain your options and retain flexibility. But China, it would appear, has a strategy. Mm -hmm. And China has goals, and they are funding them and putting assets behind them. And those goals would appear to be a, the peaceful achievement of a Sinocentric or China-centric Western Pacific. And China, just in the past month, has been uh, carrying out cruises further south in the South China Sea and into the Indian Ocean, further south than it's ever been before. You, we discussed last time the announcement of the Air Defense Identification Zone. It has announced a fishing management zone in the South China Sea. So China is, in many ways, on the move. The United States is matching these capabilities on the Chinese side with pronouncements. So as Assistant Secretary uh, uh, Russell made an announcement about the South, South China Sea. I, explain to us what this is, this, uh, what is the terminology about the line of nine? Or a nine-dash line. line. What does that mean? This was actually a line that was not drawn by the People's Republic, not by Mao Zedong Post 49, but by Chiang Kai-shek's government, the Republic of China, several years earlier. And it was a, a dotted line. It was originally 11 dashes. Now it's nine dashes, which if you picture the map of South China Sea in your mind, basically goes down the whole coast of Southeast Asia, Vietnam, right up against the Philippines, and claims all of that as China's territory. Now, China had always drawn its maps that way. But for the past several decades, it had not made any moves. It had not asserted any rights. It has never said what that claim was based on. Uh -huh. And so and it so has that's no, our challenge. We're saying this isn't legitimate. It's not based on international law or so anything So Secretary, Assistant Secretary Russell came out with the clearest statement yet. He didn't say that the line was illegitimate, mm -hmm. but he strongly implied it, saying that China needs to state what that is based on under the UN Convention on the Law of the Sea, which China is signatory to. We are not signatory, but we abide by it. And under that law, maritime claims have to be based on land claims you have certain perimeters outside of various yeah. kinds of land masses. And there are a lot of different definitions. And China's is not. It clearly can't be based on that. So what is it based on? That came very close to saying, we don't recognize the legitimacy of this claim, which you are asserting as a core interest. What's the next move? Is this, uh, is this sort of junkyard dogs uh, protecting their turf? Or are there really substantial benefits to controlling these waters? Well, for China, there's an important benefit in controlling its perimeter. Uh, China's near seas, again, if, if you picture a, a map of the S South China Sea, it has what's called the first island chain, that chain of islands that goes uh, from Indonesia through the Philippines, Taiwan, uh, and then further north. And right now, it feels that its navy, which is developing rapidly, is bottled up or can be bottled up by Japan and the United States. We, the idea is that we can keep them locked in that little bit of the Western Pacific from bases on land. And they want to be able to break out of that, not because they plan to invade the world, but because increasingly China has interests all over the world. It wants to be able to project capabilities. So there's a strong sense that as we have our Monroe Doctrine, they should reign supreme debates about what that means within those inner seas. And when we talk about tensions mounting, which is what the headlines usually say when they talk about the South China Sea, what, what are we really talking about? Are we talking about to the point of where there could be actual conflict? Yes, we are at this point. Military we, conflict? It is. There are a number of scenarios in which that could happen uh, accidentally or through non-accidental uh, clumsiness 
or deliberation. In the fairly short term, in connection with the Philippines, uh, Vietnam and the Paracels, the Diaoyu Senkakus, and we have treaty obligations to protect our allies if they have to go to war uh, with China. So it could draw the United States in very quickly over islands that we see very little intrinsic value in. We put a high value on our alliances, but not in these oceans or these islands per se. And before we say goodbye for now, uh, you're going to be leaving for China yes. in, just a few, in just a few hours. What, what's on the agenda for the trip? We are going to have a discussion with a Chinese think tank about the nature of U.S.-China relations. And in particular, they want to talk about this formulation the Chinese came up with. The United States and China have a new model of major power relations. We talked about this last time, and we talked about the fact that then-Senator, now confirmed Ambassador Baucus, had rejected this Chinese formulation that President Obama had sanctioned last year in Sunnylands. More recently, Secretary Kerry was in China, and at his solo press conference, the Chinese didn't appear with him, he also seemed very carefully to avoid avoid using this phrase. It appears that the United States is done with a phrase that the Chinese are still running with. So this will be a conference that may get a little bit awkward. Well, safe travels. Hope it doesn't get too awkward. And come back and tell us about it. See you soon. Great. Thanks.